Today, we're talking about recent coverage of the coronavirus from the team of journalists at Marijuana Business Daily. If you want more detail, please visit mjbizdaily.com. This is part two, where we're talking about the impact of the coronavirus on cannabis retailers. So our recent reporting has shown that cannabis retailers have seen a huge spike in sales in the last week or so. It's been a, a run on stores. I think people are stocking up as they're getting ready to hunker down to self-distance. And yeah, they, it's just been really, really big numbers uh, from the data we've seen. It's been described to me as almost 420-like, which is you know the biggest day for a cannabis retailer of the year. We've seen, <clears throat> yeah, you know, huge, huge increases. And that creates all kinds of challenges for these retailers. These retailers are looking at long lines. They're looking at people that are in the store that are, you know, if the CDC is recommending that we limit gatherings to 10 people or less, then, you know, these stores are really having to kind of come up with some creative ways to keep people separate, to keep people from, you know, really interacting with each other too much and too closely in the store. So that's led them to a, a few different kind of options, one being curbside uh, pickup, where we've just seen retailers kind of bring product out onto the sidewalk and have people just drive up and pick it up. And then they're also really encouraging online ordering, meaning that, you know, they're offering 10% discounts if people order online rather than, than come into the store and kind of browse. That's a way to keep people kind of moving quickly through the store and preventing them from getting too close to each other. We did see one store in Port Hollins that closed just because they couldn't manage the crowd. Uh, the owner told me they had over 500 people coming through the store in one day. And if the CDC was recommending that you know, we keep these crowd sizes down to 10 or less, then the owner just didn't feel comfortable. He didn't feel like he was able to keep his consumers safe and his staff safe if they were having that many people come through the store. So they closed. They're going to be closed indefinitely. I, we haven't seen much more of that yet, or at least we haven't heard of it. Um, but we imagine that that's probably going to continue to happen. The other thing is staffing issues. Um, you have people that are worried about coming into work and working in retail and, and you know, just want to stay safe. So that's another challenge for these retailers. And if these retail stores do start closing, then it, we will see an impact on the domestic supply chain. We'll see cultivators and processors unable to sell their products. Um, it would, would really kind of shutter the entire industry if there's nowhere to sit to sell. So that's that's a huge part of it. One positive from all of this is that medical cannabis dispensaries have been deemed essential in certain locations. Local governments have said that medical cannabis patients can receive their medicine even in places where a business has been shut down. And that legitimizes these businesses at the same level as a pharmacy that's selling traditional medicine. And that really does give the industry, um, you know, some credit, some ability to combat stigma and is just an all around positive for the industry as a whole.